we'll start with Duchamp, who I, I think was a coward to give up painting. Uh, he was a fair to middling painter. Brother, I think, surpassed him in painting, mm -hmm. Jacques Villon. Brother was a good sculptor. I think he got waylaid by ideas which are highly attractive, particularly in our verbal world of, and environment of the use of ideas and words. It's a very attractive thing, ideas. Nothing wrong, and Duchamp's contribution in that sense is certainly uh, useful. Uh, Jeff Koons, I think, along with a whole number of younger and uh, provocative painters and sculptors, I think have uh, given way to high skill technology, um, large employment of assistants and specialists, carvers, uh, technicians. And that, for me, is a whole other world. Um, I've been talking about the most rudimentary, hands-on, uh, one-person painting. There have been historical antecedents, however, with Rubens, who apparently had as many as 100 people under his direction. And many of great artists had a lot of people who worked with him. But I think that's quite a different thing still with the kind of human touch and human editing and overseeing of work. So I find that to be quite different. So I don't know much about these technologically uh, directed art movements and am inclined to be less interested in those. Too much to do with the spectacular, too little to do with intimacy. Thank you. What advice would you give a mid-career artist? Keep going, <laughs> keep hoping, being prepared for the worst, but hoping for the best. But the joy of working, being a painter, really has to be enough. I mean, if you love being a painter and you can forget the idea of art, I find that useful because that means you can paint any damn thing you want in any style so long as you do it well and are committed to its, uh, what it is and willing to stand up for it as your work. Why am I always talk, trying to talk like I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> this is a terrible thing to put on a person. I mean, none of us are good enough to do what I'm doing. It's just, <laughs> it's another whole, it's another whole thing, but I appreciate you all coming and appreciate <laughs> your indulgence. But I want you to know that uh, you appreciate, certainly, first of all, the great privilege that someone like me has to be a teacher and a painter. And, and that's enough. What kind of music do you listen to? And do you listen to music while you paint? I do, all kinds of music. I particularly love uh, classics, but I also love, uh, I love, my favorite is uh, Fats Waller. I want him played at my funeral, your feet's too big. <laughs> <laughs> love guitar music and uh, listen to a lot of that. Um, one last question. How did you know that painting was what you were meant to do? Well, I really didn't. I really 
mostly wanted to be a cartoonist and uh, still do cartoons all every other day or so when I get up. Uh, we collect our original cartoons and they're a big, big uh, part of, of my love. The cartoons. But being a painter, that's, uh, I came to it very slowly, much too late to be as good as I would like to be. I mean, Picasso had a drawing instructor for a father and started painting at the age of six. Um, so with me, it came slowly. I, I just became more and more aware and interested in how wonderful and what great paintings there were that a human being like us uh, could do. I mean, you go and look at a Titian painting or a Degas painting, or I don't know, any of those good people, wonderful Mary Cassatt or Rosa Bonheur. I mean, these painters, I mean, the Rosa Bonheur painting, I remember the first painting I, I didn't even know it was a painting, but it was a reproduction over my grandfather's desk of the horse fair. And a, it's a painting about 10 feet high and about 18 feet long. It hangs in the Metropolitan Museum. It's got about, you know, 20 horses in all positions. It's got 30 people on the banks watching it. It's got 10 or 15 trainers. I mean, it's a monumental masterwork. It's just staggering. Where am I going with this? Let's see. Uh, how did I know I was going to be a painter? I think from seeing works on a much lower level, seeing an old desert painter paint a cactus and some blue mountains, gee, I'd like to do that, you know. And I think that's what it came to be. I mean, I've said enough already. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Um, you talked about the cartoons you still do. Do their subjects relate at all to your paintings? Is it a totally side enterprise for you? Sometimes. <laughs> Dick Diebenkorn sent me a, a little cartoon of a, talking about art. There's this guy with a little painter's cap on. He's got a big canvas on an easel. He's turned around and he's made this big black strike right through the center of the canvas. He's turning around and saying, the trick in painting is to suck that, to make that sucker the center of interest right in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a wonderful kind of shocking truth. And that's, what, that's the wonder of cartoons, aren't they? I mean, they, they tickle you. They disrupt your thinking. They stagger your intellectual dominance. They undercut you. These are human strategies of extreme effect. But painters generally love cartoons. Most of them start as cartoons, or many, particularly American cartoons. It strikes me that and some of them collect cartoons. Uh, <laughs> de Kooning collected Crazy Cats. Mm -hmm. Picasso loved Crazy Cat. I mean, uh, Philip Guston talks endlessly about Mutt and Jeff. And you look at his paintings and those upside down shoes going this way, light bulbs, those all come from Mutt and Jeff comic strips. You know. Of course, he did mar marvelous things with them. But. Well, many of the ways you describe cartoons also apply to your painting in terms of showing us the world from another oblique angle and encouraging uh -huh. us to see more or see differently. Thank you. So, Thank you for your time, your generosity with your words and your ideas uh -huh. and for the way that your painting does encourage us to slow uh -huh. down and reflect and through your looking, look more carefully and slowly at the world. Uh -huh. it's, it's our pleasure. Thank thanks you very much. Thanks for your much. very good questions and thanks for the audience. For your